Hey guys, it's Annie here. Today's video, I'm gonna tell you everything that I learned when I was traveling Cuba. So first, and probably one of the most important things that you should know about when traveling Cuba is their currency. They have two types of currency, which is the CUC and the CUP. CUC is equivalent to US dollars, and CUP is their local currency. So one CUC is equivalent to 25.75 CUP. So just keep in mind that when you're shopping everywhere in Cuba, if it requires CUP, then you just gotta have to do the math. And you just gotta have to be smart in math, because there's actually no Wi-Fi connection in Cuba, which we'll talk more about later, so you can't access any Google conversion unless you have a conversion app on your iPhone. Also one thing you should know about as well is if you are a tourist you are automatically charged CUC in most places. So it is very smart to have a local guide or if you speak a little bit of Spanish it helps as well and just pretend yourself that you are a Cuban. Libre? No? <laughs> Free, 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 free! How do you Alfredo. Alfredo. Yanni. Okay, Yanni. So right after our plane landed, the very first thing that we did is we looked for an ATM and we drew cash. Because we're drawing Cuban money, you can always do this in Cuba. Luckily, there's a mini bank or an ATM. It's not really an ATM, but I wouldn't call it a bank as well. So I would just say a mini bank where there's a, probably three tellers right outside the airport probably Terminal 3, if I'm not mistaken. I know one of them doesn't have the tellers because my friend had to go to the other terminal to withdraw cash. Literally, it's just three windows with three people inside giving out, exchanging money. So after we got the money, we hopped on the cab and we drove to our Airbnb. We decided to take the taxi because we didn't wanna risk it taking the local transit because we didn't know how to get there. And you'll probably notice right away that people wanna grab your attention because they wanna fight for your money. So you'll see right outside the airport, there's a lot of people try to grab you, try to convince you to take their taxi, and my only tip is always bargain. So even though you have a lot of options because there's a lot of people trying to grab your attention, feel free to shop around, ask around, and most likely their prices are about similar anyway, so don't be scared to bargain. So we decided to stay right at the heart of Havana, and once you get to your Airbnb, you'll notice right away that their houses have very high steep stairs. Now this is normal in Cuba, so don't be scared, uh, you just gotta have to climb up the stairs with your suitcases like what we did it, it was brutal and we decided to book an Airbnb that is on the rooftop so we had to climb three flights of stairs because the building that we stayed at was three floor apartment type building so there's the first floor after the first flight of stairs there's the first floor somebody was renting it and there's another floor and then finally the rooftop which was nice in the end because we get a very nice view most Airbnb in Cuba offer breakfast now it's literally called bed and breakfast. So if your Airbnb offers breakfast, I highly recommend taking advantage of that because our Airbnb offered breakfast and they definitely cooked a lot of good breakfast. The breakfast could range from $5 to $15. Ours was only $5 luckily and it was a very good breakfast as well. One more thing about Airbnb is don't bother asking for Wi-Fi because none of them have Wi-Fi. It's very rare to have a Wi-Fi access in a house in Cuba. So if you're shopping for Airbnb in Havana or anywhere in Cuba, forget about Wi-Fi. Just be Wi-Fi free for a week or how long, however long you're staying in Havana. If you really want Wi-Fi access, there's a lot of parks around Havana where there's Wi-Fi access and the only way to connect to the Wi-Fi is you have to buy the card and whenever you see a store that has a long lineup that's usually the store where you can buy the card so the first thing that I asked myself when I decided to travel to Cuba is safety now there's just a lot of misconception about Cuba and I think there's a lot of um, rumors of what Cuba is like being a communist country however when I got there and lived there for I think a week and a half I would say it's actually one of the best safest country I've ever lived in the streets might seem sketchy because it's not really well lit it's very dim in some places and there's you just see like a lot of cobblestone -y. it's actually very safe honestly it's very safe fun fact we were walking home from the club at 2 a.m. and we were all drunk and we were just still partying in our in our minds and we were like shouting on the streets I wouldn't suggest but we did and we felt safe and we got home to our Airbnb safe and 
We've been doing that every single night since we got there. We're coming home at 2 a.m. partying. <laughs> Tip number five is getting around Cuba. So most of the time, we just walked around Havana. We just literally walked. Since we live downtown, everything was walking distance for us. Most of the tourist spots. However, there's definitely spots that you should check out that is not in the downtown core. So to get there, I would suggest I wouldn't suggest taking the local bus however there's a lot of transportation services that I think are better than taking the bus and would definitely save you a lot of time so one of them is the Bixi taxi they call it the Bixi taxi it's just a motorcycle that could probably fit two to three people and these taxis will take you to four or five tourist spots around Havana so for us it took us to this art outdoor museum it took us to the university of havana uh the engineering of havana and it was very worth it i think we paid 15 dollars cuc like i said don't forget about cup if you're a tourist they're gonna charge you cuc next is the convertibles these are the instagram worthy you'll see this all over instagram and these are the convertibles that are very cute and you'll see there's a lot of different colors of convertibles in havana there are polka dots there are pink ones we chose the pink one because obviously we are extras my friends and i are extra and it's the exact same deal as the Bixit Taxi. It will take you to all the tourist spots. Some of them actually carries a lot of brochures and posters. And in the posters, it will show you which spot they will take you to. Again, shop around because there's a lot of them, especially in Central Havana. If you go to the Central Park in Havana, you'll see all of them circling the Central Square. The sixth observation that I noticed when I was in Havana is there's a lot of culture in Havana, especially African culture. There's a lot of African arts. There's a lot of um, Afro music. And Cubans love music. There's a lot of musicians in Cuba. And I'm not just talking about guitar, singing type of music. This, I'm talking about like trumpet, saxophone, like brass instruments. Next is filming. So since I'm a YouTuber, <laughs> since I produce videos online, I was definitely gonna document this. One of my questions was, since it's a communist country, I heard rumors that you're not allowed to film, you're not allowed, journalism is not allowed from other countries, and that definitely scared. And I was not about to put this travel to waste, so I definitely wanted to vlog it. So I didn't, I was very discreet at first, not showing my camera, and luckily my camera is not that big anyway, I'm only using the mirrorless camera from Canon. And nobody really asked me, Nobody, no police stopped me, I was even vlogging right in front of them. So in conclusion, I think filming is safe. That's all I'm gonna say about it. However, no drones allowed. So, so if you go to some parks, you'll actually see a lot of signs that says drone a bar. So you cannot fly drone in Havana. So the eight tip or observation or whatever this is now, cause I don't know at this point anymore what I've been saying, is try to explore town outside of Havana. So we were fortunate enough to be able to explore the town called Trinidad. Trinidad is about five hours outside of Havana. We drove about five hours and we just rented a car. Our Airbnb actually helped us rent this car so most airbnb as well are connected with all other services in the city and if you want to follow what i did i highly recommend visiting trinidad trinidad is such a nice small town and there's a it's actually a very touristy town there's a lot of tourists there as well it's one of the tourist destinations so i'm just gonna tell you quickly the things that we did in trinidad i don't think it's worth it to make a whole new video for trinidad but we went to the waterfall we rode the horse for i think two to three hours to get to the waterfalls and 20 minute walking into the waterfall and we checked out the cave that has a party in it literally it's a club inside a cave and it's so cool because every time you're dancing and you're talking laughing and drinking and every time you look up you see all those cave rocks forming and the last and final tip is have fun once in a while if you can try to travel to a country that you've never been to before and to a country that you actually will not understand their language i just want to end this video by sharing a quote from trevor noah he actually said that if there's one thing that you will never waste your money on it'd be traveling traveling is the antidote of ignorance it changes your mind your perspective how you believe what you believe go to a place where they don't speak your language just to make you realize how insignificant you really are you're not that important the world doesn't revolve around you in short you're not the center of the universe so there you have it you guys i hope you enjoyed this video and i hope it's very helpful i just wanted to share it out there because going to cuba there were, i had a lot of perspective and I, I there's a lot of things that i didn't know about and there's only so much googling you can do and the internet pretty much blocked everything about Cuba as well, being a communist country. So there's a lot of misconception about Cuba and going there that definitely changed everything. It changed my mind all about Cuba. I would go back there in a heartbeat. So there you have it. Enjoy and have fun traveling. Bye! Yeah.